Uh, hello hello can can anybody hear me if you can hear me please um type in the chat box um, please type in the chat box if you can hear me and uh yeah it takes a bit of time to um we are running our first uh webinar after the launch so that's awesome very excited and uh let's um let's have a show of hands where where everybody's from so once again hopefully uh, this is working and everybody can hear me so let's just check that quickly um yeah all right so while we're waiting for that to come through Awesome, Josh can hear me, Josh from Washington, D.C. Beautiful, uh, so guys keep tapping that in. So while we're tapping that in, um, if you're wondering, I'm in Montreal. I'm uh, just here learning some, or I was learning, just traveling by and practicing some French, so it's pretty cool. Um, so it's 8 a.m. in the morning here. Hopefully this time is good, it's a Sunday. We decided just to try it out on a Sunday to see, um, you know, for the, for the members of Forexport Academy, how it's gonna go. And so far, I'm pretty happy. Uh, so far, we've got 14 people live, right? So, and that is given that we are only inviting members now. So it's only a, it's just a very intimate group. So pretty cool. I think this time works. Now let's see who we've got online. We've got Josh from Washington. Hey, Josh. We've got Raphael from, where are you from, Raphael? It didn't say. Uh, thanks for saying you can hear me. Elia from Israel. Wow, that's so far away. That's so cool. I've never been, I've never been there. Uh, Boone from Melbourne. Hey, Boone. Uh, it's, uh, it must be pretty late in Melbourne right now. Uh, Rafael Moreno from Mexico. Hey, Rafael. Uh, Luca. Hey, Luca, Croatia. Hey, man. How are you going? Luca is one of the guys on the, on the Forex Boat homepage uh, testimonial. So Luca is famous. Uh, Carlos from Houston, Texas. Martin from Milk. Is that Melbourne, Martin? Uh, Martin, oh, Melbourne, there we go. Uh, Rafael Moreno from, no, oh, from you're from Puebla, Mexico. Okay, beautiful. And Paul, Paul from England. <laughs> hey, Luca again. Um, Rod, awesome. Uh, hey, from Sydney, beautiful. So we've got good mix of everyone. So um, pretty happy that uh, you guys are all members and we have this now very. Uh, intimate group. I was just thinking about this in the morning. I was like, this is really cool. We, we have like, I feel like family. I feel like when I go on, I, I don't usually go on Facebook. I go, usually I'll go on Facebook like once a month or maybe once a week. <laughs> and um, now when I go on Facebook, I'm like, oh, cool, straight away, straight away to the group. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Rod, for the beer, for the comment on the beer. It's like, it's like growing completely out of hand. And uh, we'll see, we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, so when I go on Facebook now, I'm like, oh, cool, I'm going to go in the Facebook group. And uh, by the way, hopefully everybody's there. So I'm actually going to go at the, <laughs> I don't, I, um, I can probably even say who I've seen there. Like, Luca, I haven't seen you on the Facebook group. Luca, you better get on that Facebook group. I don't know. I don't know why you're not there. Um, so, Raph, Raphael, I don't think I've seen you there either. So you guys um, jump on the Facebook group beyond there great discussion, some great chats, and uh, like I'm, I'm there pretty much every day answering questions, and you've got, you've got some um, ideas even, people are discussing ideas for forex robots, for manual trading strategies, and um, somebody's even posting their like weekly updates on how they went, how many pips they made, how many pounds they made, and so on. So it's a really great experience. I'm really enjoying reading about all of your um, uh, wins in the forex market, and even like sometimes when you have uh, troubles and really happy to jump in and give some um, guidance on, on like how I would do things so really cool and now I'm like finding myself going on Facebook more often and it's it's, it's interesting I was not expecting <laughs> to be using Facebook okay um, so quick a little intro I'm glad webinar gems are working um, that's that's awesome um, yeah, so today's webinar, what is it about? It's about uh, Forex risk management. And now, again, I'll show you the disclaimer when we start the presentation. And uh, you have to keep in mind that all these things we talk about, they're only like, they're not like advice. The, um, 
financial advice or personal advice, they're all general advice. So that means that we just give um, ideas or definitions of things and how things work and what, what to look out for. But at the end of the day, you have to make your own decisions. And we're going to talk about like why in Forex, what kind of uh, things we need to be worried about in Forex or be, con be not, not concerned, but uh, watch out for in Forex in terms of risk. What type of risks exist in the Forex market? Like we won't go all over all of them, but uh, we'll cover off quite a few and mostly related to setting your position and uh, understanding um, what your lot size should be or could be and what potential risks of that are. And at the end, we'll even look at market volatility risk. So that's going to be quite an interesting one as well. And uh, of course, at the, at the very end, we'll have a Q&A session. And speaking of Q&A, uh, give me an idea. Uh, we ha I had a poll. So <coughs> we're going to start with uh, this one poll I want you guys to take quickly. Uh, so just uh, the other question is, do you consider risk management in your forex trading? And like, I want you to be uh, like, just any kind of risk management, you know, like it doesn't have to be super intense stuff that we talk about here or anything, but uh, just like any type of, um, if you think you consider kind of some sort of risk management, you think, oh yeah, I can, I, I look at risk management during my forex trading, just say yes or no. I mean, yes, if you, if you completely ignore risk management, say no. And then through this webinar, you'll be able to see oh, actually, do I consider all of those things in risk management? Or did I actually learn something new today? Maybe I should take that into account. And maybe the risk management I was considering before is not, is not uh, substantial enough. Maybe I should be a bit more conservative or and more thought through in my trading. So, okay, so hopefully you guys have started voting on that. And uh, surprisingly, um, or I guess not surprisingly, I guess 100%, of you guys said yes uh, you consider risk management and uh, <laughs> i don't think this is a glitch in the system that's what i was expecting you know like we uh, wouldn't be here you wouldn't be in the forex world trading academy if you didn't consider risk management because like one of the reasons you're here is because you're smart about your trading you um you think about these things you've invested into getting and becoming a better trader and i'd be you know like maybe if you brutally honest and you're very harsh on yourself, you would say no, but generally, like, if if you've been not considering risk management, but generally speaking, I was expecting that uh, people who are in this academy, given that you're so invested into course that you're so passionate about learning it, that in one way or another, you're, you're considering risk management. So our goal for this webinar is to show you other ways you can consider risk management in your trading. and. Uh, then you'll be able to enhance your trading that way. So it's all about showing you avenues, how you can improve your trading. All right, so awesome. Uh, excited to get started. Let's jump to the presentation. Um, hold on. <laughs> I nearly forgot to switch my screen to screen for that. That would be funny. I'm going through a presentation and all you can see is my, my beard. That would be, that would be cool. All right, let's switch to screen share mode. Um, and uh, da, 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 which one? This one. Start a screen share. All right, you, you guys should see the screen. Um, please type into the uh, what's it called? Please type into the uh, chat if you can see the screen. Just so Martin can confirm. Martin's also online. Thank you, Martin. Um, if he can confirm that you guys can see the screen. If there's any problems, then oh, we'll you know, we'll fix them up. <coughs> But otherwise, I'll get started. So Forex Pro Training Academy, yay. Webinar number seven, exciting. Um, disclaimer, please read through this disclaimer. Uh, five seconds, it has to be on the screen. We are a regulated company in Australia, so we provide general advice. And you have to be comfortable with this disclaimer before we proceed on to this uh, tutorial uh, webinar. By the way, if you're watching a recording, same thing. Please watch the disclaimer before watching the rest of the material. And disclaimer applies to what we've already talked about as well. All right, I'm just going to kind of check. Awesome, beautiful. So let's get started. Plan for today, order execution checklist. So <clears throat> it's not gonna be a massive checklist because it's not big at all in general for uh, risk management when placing your trading strategy. Then we'll talk about risk per trade. 
and uh, what uh, what it is, what the general guidelines, uh, worldly guidelines are, and what other things you should consider in your risk per trade, your monthly targets and limits in forex trading. That's an interesting one, interesting topic. Should you set monthly targets for your profits? Should you set monthly targets for your limits? Or what are the pros and cons? Like again, we can't tell you if you should or shouldn't. You should remember that we're we're not here to promise you that you're going to, uh, you know, whoops, <laughs> you're going to make millions. We're here to give you all of the information for you to make an informed decision. Um, leverage the magnifier of risk. We're going to talk about leverage and see how it magnifies risks and why. And is it a bad thing or a good thing? And assessing market volatility at the end will play around with some market volatility and see how that can affect your trading and if uh, what kind of risks lie in that as well. All right, excited? I'm pretty excited. Just, um, you know, got a good presentation coming up. All right, number one, order execution checklist. What does that mean? So um, if you've done, hopefully you've done the Forex Trading A to Z course. I know some of you haven't. Um, I'm not going to say any names. <laughs> because I, I I don't know them off by heart, but I can definitely go and check who has done it, who hasn't done it. Um, but we're not in high school and preschool, so you guys can decide for yourself. I highly advise that you go through that course, even even on the, you know just jumping through it. But still, you pick up a lot of good stuff in that course. Towards the end, um, wink wink. It's uh, it's after after all the fundamental analysis type of sections. There's a section about, um, it actually contains literally two tutorials. So it take like, takes, I don't know, 10 minutes to go through. Um, we have this formula, lots equals risk divided by stop loss times pips. And that is how lots risk, uh, in risk in units of quoted currency and stop loss are connected when you're setting an order. We actually derive this formula in the course. It's not like it's taken off the ceiling it's actually derived. And we, we also talk about what's the difference between pips and points. And that's also important to remember because in this formula, you have to plug in pips, which is the four digit decimal on uh, non japanese currencies and two digit decimal on uh, japanese currencies, currency pairs. Um, so we talk about this formula, we derive this formula. And uh, well, now I'm going to go through this formula quickly and that will allow us to go to the checklist. But once again, if you want to get a lot more detail on this, on the actual formula, then go to the course. You have unlimited access to it as a member of the club, and you can just go and watch uh, that, rewatch that tutorial at any time. So, uh, what what is going on with this formula? Um, lots, uh, lots is so. Let's say that you're setting a trade, right? So this is how things are interconnected. Let's let's forget. Let's start with. Um, Let's, let's think like a normal trader, like a normal trader would think, okay, I'm setting a certain amount of loss, let's say 0 0.1 loss for my order. Okay, cool. Um, and then where am I going to set my stop loss? I'm going to set my stop loss at 50 pips. So he says 0 0.1, so you open that order window for setting an order in MetaTrader 4. He sets a loss or that trader sets a loss at 0 0.1, sets the stop loss at and that's kind of the order it comes in that window, right? It's a bit tricky. It comes in that order. It said lots to 0 0.1 and then set the stop loss at whatever, 50 pips. And so there, and some, even some traders just stop at that and then they like execute the order. But well, the risk, the actual amount of money that they're going to lose if this trade goes negative, like if, it, uh, if it's a loss trade, can be calculated from this formula. You just multiply, you just move the SL pips times 10 to the other side and it'll be risk in, units of quota currency equals lots times stop loss in pips times 10. So it'll be 0 0.1 times 50 pips times 10 makes it 50 units of quota currency. So if you're trading, let's say, US dollar, Canadian dollar, the quoted currency is Canadian dollar, meaning that you will uh, lose, what did we say, 50 Canadian dollars on that trade. So you can very easily from this formula calculate how much you will potentially lose if your uh, trade becomes a loss, right? So you just take lots, you multiply by the stop loss in pips, not in points, remember in pips, and you multiply by 10. That's as, as easy as that. Um, again, you can calculate the same thing for the profit. Uh, it'll be lot, lots times, uh, so take profit in pips times 10. So you don't really have to do much. Like you just know your lots, you know your pips, and you take profits, you multiply them and multiply by 10. That's how much you'll make in the units of quoted currency. Remember, it's not the same as the, account balance currency now um that's all great and lovely you know you already learned a hack today how to 
calculate your uh, risk and stop loss in dollars or, uh, or in units of quarter currency or take profit in units of quarter currency. But that's not the point of this. The point is that most traders actually get it wrong. Most, most traders, or like, I can't say right or wrong, but I wouldn't take that approach. I wouldn't say um, that, okay, I'm going to think of loss and then I'm going to think of my stop loss. I'm going to forget about my risk. It's all about risk management. So we're all about understanding our risks, right? Going into something, knowing the risks. And here, for instance, why, uh, why do we start with loss? Why do we start with loss and why do we start with stop loss and stop loss pips? No, like my approach is start with risk. Risk is a very important factor in your trading. You should think about that first. And so hence, step one, identify risk in units of quoted currency. So, and how do you identify risk? So that is how much are you prepared to lose on this specific trade? It can be a percentage of your balance. It can be like 2% of your balance. It can be a certain amount of dollars. It can be like $100 or $200. Um, it can be like, depending on your trade, it could be a different value. It could actually factor in volatility of the market or something like that. But at the end of the day, you got to identify the risk and you got to be comfortable with it. You got to be like, okay, so if this trade goes negative, I'm going to lose you know, $300 and I'm happy with that or like $30. And, you know, I'm not, not, uh, not completely excited about it, but, you know, I will, I'll be able to live with that. It won't ruin my account. I'll be able to continue trading. It fits in with my trading plan and with my statistical expectation of how many losses I'll have. So I, can, I know that, you know, maybe on average I can out of like my, my trading strategy can have a drawdown of like five losses in a row. And my account can withstand five losses in a row if, I set the risk at thirty dollars. If I set it at seventy dollars, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose all my money. Right? But if I set it at thirty dollars, that's cool. So then you take that thirty dollars. That's your account balance, right? And then this is the, this is still part of step one. You see in the brackets, and you convert it into the units of quoted currency. So remember that it's very important. If you're trading like US dollar Canadian, Australian dollar, US dollar, you know, like or uh, currencies that are close to the US dollar, it might not be as important. Uh, like it, it is, I mean, it's still important, it might not be as visible because like say, US dollar, Canadian dollar is a good example because US dollar is on the left there, it's a base currency, Canadian dollar is a quoted currency. By the way, check out that same course if you need a refresher on base and quoted currencies. And it's fine, by the way, I want to say it's totally fine if you ever need refreshers on something. Hell, I need refreshers sometimes. I go into my own courses and I'm like, oh, cool, this is how this works. Oh, cool, this is how this works. Because you forget things, you get carried away with all these things. And it's nothing embarrassing if you, you get what a base currency is and what a quote currency is. Anyway, US dollar, Canadian dollar. There, the US dollar and Canadian are pretty close, right? They're pretty similar most of the time. Like, it's not like British pound dollar or something like that, or euro dollar even. And so, if you forget it, like it'll be, it will won't be a major big deal. But if you forget, you forget, it, forget it on some other currency where you've got like US dollar knock or something like that, where the difference is massive, you you can make a big mistake. So make sure to convert your risk from dollars, from your base, from your balance currency to quoted currency, all right? So we've identified that. That's the risk value in your formula. That's where you start. Then, where is it? There it is. Then identify your stop loss level. So stop loss, obviously, as we've discussed in the previous um, webinars, we had a whole webinar on stop loss and take profit strategies. Check that out, by the way, if you haven't seen a pretty cool webinar. Um, so stop loss should be identified based on the chart, based on market volatility, based on your trading strategy, based on whatever is, um, yeah, exactly, whatever is in your trading strategy identifies where you should set your stop loss. Not, not your lots, not how much money you want to lose, or you've already decided how much money you're going to lose, right? So just, you've, you've derived that, it's part of the equation, great. Now don't worry about that, figure out where you want to set your stop loss. And that might be a resistance, support resistance, that might be an indicator, might be a fixed amount of pips based on your trading strategy, might be a statistically uh, calculated amount of pips. Oh, by the way, some really cool uh, um, comments on stop loss and take profit are in the strategy building um, 101 course. So um, if you're an early bird, you'll have access to the course, so make sure to check that out. Uh, but otherwise, uh, in the webinar, we also have some strategies on setting stop loss and take profit. So basically, once you 
set your figure out when where you want to set your stop loss just measure the amount of pips right so uh, you might set it graphically somehow so you set the uh, stop loss graphically on your chart or some some other way and then just measure the amount of pips from uh, that you know that just you set your stop loss at you've identified your stop loss you have identified your risk and now you plug them into the formula right so now you calculate the loss that's where a lot of traders go wrong. You don't make up the lots. You don't think of the lots like, oh, this month I'm trading with 0.1 lots, or this month I'm trading with two lots, or you know, this trade looks good. I'm going to enter with 0.5 lots. No, that's the, then then you're like ruining this whole process. You, you understand that if you calculate the lots, then you can either then either the risk or the stop loss pips will be dependent on the other two. So you calculate the lots and you set the stop loss how most people do then you won't know the risk in advance you will have to like calculate the risk from here or if you set the loss and you set the risk then your stop loss won't be set according to your trading strategy it will be set according to the formula so the proper way in my view again is find the risk find the stop loss and pips and then only calculate your lots <clears throat> so that's uh, a one of the risk risk management strategies in forex that you uh, know your risks in advance not only in lots because lots is a very very vague kind of thing depending on how far your stop loss is your risk is going to be different not only in stop loss because people think oh i've set my stop loss at 40 pips so i know my risks no you don't because your loss is going to dictate how much money you're going to lose at the end of the day it's about the bottom line on your account not about how much how many of these uh magical pips in your stop loss or how many magical lots you're you you're trading with like they, they're all great terms they're all uh, jargon but at and at the end of the uh, line what is measured the main kpi is the balance on your account your key performance indicator your balance on your account so um yeah think about those steps i think uh very very important and a lot of traders get it wrong especially starting out traders okay that was number one uh, result better controlled risk so it doesn't guarantee you you'll control your risks entirely but it's better controlled risks because you know what you're getting into with every single trade cool risk per trade number two okay so hopefully that was exciting number one was uh, pretty you know gives you some food food for thought even though it's simple stuff it's, uh, it's it's often overlooked so food for thought a risk per trade let's look at that Generally accepted view, two percent is moderate, ten percent is already high. So this is not, um, it's not a instruction or uh, some advice on how you should conduct your trading. This is just an overview of you know what is in the market, what traders think, and like uh, two percent in terms of risk. When we're talking about reward here, we're talking about risk. So uh, if you set a trade and you're risking two percent of your account on that trade. It's considered moderate because statistically you can set or mathematically in a basic division you can set as as long as you know you keep it two percent of the original balance in the account you can set 50 of those trades before your account um lo you lose your whole account but because we're trading with leverage it's a bit less than that because uh, you'll still have like frozen margin and stuff like that so but you know why is it considered moderate because in 50 trades if your trading strategy is generally speaking profitable, if you've tested it and you've derived that you know it it makes profit in the long run, in the um, statistically it makes profit, right? So in fifty trades, you have that sample, at least fifty or let's say forty trades. In those forty trades, you have enough time. You're giving your strategy enough time to show its good sides and its bad side, right? So if statistically it's a good trading strategy, then there's a likelihood like the chance of, that it will blossom in those 40 trades it will actually show its true face is greater right so you you're giving it some time to um have both positive and negative trades and um and uh, turn into something useful or show you some um, good results that you're expecting in the end. whereas if you don't need 10 if you do 10 percent per trade you know that can that's great that can lead to great stuff but at the same time you can only do 10 of those trades before you lose your whole account or probably like nine because we still have margin so in nine trades do you really think your trading strategy will be able to show you both your its positive sides and its negative sides in nine trades kind of like 
it feels that you feel less confident in that, right? So it feels like maybe there might be a streak of losses in those nine trades and you'll lose your whole account, right? Or maybe there'll be like five losses, four losses, then two positives and four losses and another loss and that's it. So kind of you're not giving enough room for your strategy to gain momentum. So that, think about that, like some people trade with 20% of their account, that's only four trades until you lose your whole account. You really think that four, you can't have four consecutive losses even in, a pro, in the most profitable trading strategy in the world? I don't think so, I think, I think you can. So that's kind of what it's about and uh, of course also the losing of the 20% of your balance or 10% of your balance in one trade is also a big uh, risk. Again, at the end of the day, it's, it's your choice. Like I, I've done I've done both like with, uh, with a big, uh, with a small account when I need to um, fast track it, like really fast forward it. Oh, I can say it sometimes, well, this is back in the day, not anymore, like, um, uh, like start with a small account and then set the lots very high or the percentage uh, percentage of risk very high and there, therefore you like spin the account very quickly and you turn like a five, but it's a small account, like a $500 account. And usually my mentality there is like, oh, I've already, I put the money on the account and I consider it lost because the likelihood of this going through is very low. Uh, but then with 20%, you can spin it to like $2,000, $3,000 very quickly. And then from there, you reduce the loss and you start trading more conservatively, but you have a bigger account. But at the same time, you have to be prepared to lose those $500 because there's like a 90% chance of you losing that money or somewhere around there. Whereas then if you have a bigger account, 2% is moderate and you just trade. And like a lot of people ask me, uh, well, I've had a few questions recently. Um, you know, I'm only earning this much money um how do i like only like two two pounds per trade or something like that how do i do should i increase or not well there's trade-offs right there's trade-offs if you increase your percentage size you might uh, might uh, end up uh, without an account at all so it's things to think about so again everybody's situation is different these are just generally accepted views you like google stuff you'll see that people talk about two percent and ten percent and some people talk about more but that's a bit a bit insane but so that, that's that's going back to our risk thing. That's we're talking about the risk now. How do you calculate that risk, right? So one thing is to know the formula. Another thing is how do you, how do I figure out my risk? Is it going to be two percent, ten percent? What is it going to be? So how are we going? Whoa, half an hour already. All right. Um, another like so that's that's the general accepted view. The thing that you should definitely consider as well: abide by the Kelly criterion. Now, Kelly criterion. Either see the money management course. There's a whole section on the Kelly criteria explained very in a lot of detail. I know some of you are sitting there right now and saying, "Oh, cool! I've seen the money management course. I know exactly what he's talking about. Um, I, I I even do this in my trading, or I should do this in my trading. I'll start doing it." But at the same time, I know that there's a couple of you again, won't say any names, that uh, who have not uh, watched the money management course, who do not know what I'm talking about right now. And if you want to get a quick overview of the Kelly Criterion, let's go to forexboat.com slash Kelly Criterion. Um, give me a second. So I'm going to try open that. Let's give it a second to load. And I'm just going to show you, there's like an article here. So you can get started with the Kelly Criterion here. Let it blow your mind. And then, um, and then move on to the videos, right? To the um, academy part. So trading the variable coin toss, so we talk about stuff. So the point here is that, um, I don't know if you can see this. How do I zoom in? There we go. Probably like that. So uh, the Kelly Curtin, what it talks about is if, let's say you're playing a coin toss game where, what, what is the game like? Um, Let's play uh, playing a coin toss game where every time you every time on heads I pay you two dollars on tails you lose one dollar so it's in so you only you win two dollars and you lose only one dollar it's a very very profitable trading strategy right so every time a coin's flipped it's a 50 50 chance right so every time coins flip you if it's heads you get two bucks if it's tails you lose one dollar how cool is that like it sounds impossible to be able to lose that strategy right because your expected return is two times 50% uh, minus one times 50% is uh, one minus, you know, 50 cents. So it's like your expected return on average, you get 50 cents per every coin toss. So you're like, keep tossing the coin, I'm just making money. 
But in reality, what's going on is that you can actually lose that game if you have incorrect money management. So you can read this article about it. So I'll just show you an example. If you bet 10% of your account every single time, we're talking about percentages, right? If you take, bet 10% of your account every single time, uh, after two tosses, you'll have like a heads and a tails, you'll have $108. If you bet 20%, you get 112 after every two tosses, like 112 and then, so you'll be 1.12 every time, 1.12 every time on top of your account after every two tosses and heads and tails come, with about the same frequency. If you bet, if you toss it, uh, if you bet thirty percent of your account, you also get one one point one two. Forty percent. Now you're back at one hundred eight. Fifty percent of your account. Every time you bet, you break even. Do you start betting more than fifty percent? You start betting sixty, seventy, and so on. You will start losing money. How crazy is that? Even with a very profitable trading strategy, which is you know two dollars when it's heads and one dollar when it's tails, and you only lose one dollar when it's tails. You can lose money if you bet the wrong amount. And that's the Kelly criteria, and that's how to calculate it. So definitely check it out, or I would, I would suggest watching the videos because we go into a lot of detail on all of this. And um, here's the chart. So I'm just going to walk you through the chart. So Kelly's criteria, and this is what it looks like. So this is the risk of the account that you, uh, you're betting, what we talked about previously in that uh, formula. And this is the return that you're getting. And so there's a, there's a Kelly value at which um, at which you maximize your return in the long run. We're not talking about one trade. We're talking about in the long run, your trading strategy return is maximized at the Kelly value. At the double Kelly value, it breaks even, and then after that, it drops off. Um, so, uh, and then that's how this uh, chart is broken down into regions. So you've got the Kelly value, you got the half Kelly, and you got the double Kelly, um, or the two Kelly. So you've got conservative risk, or conservative trading in this yellow zone before the half Kelly. Anything between a half Kelly and Kelly is aggressive. Uh, like Kelly is, is considered optimal, but at the same time, most people use half Kelly because, again, we talk about this in the video because you don't lose that much in revenue. You can see like there's not that much of a difference here between the in terms of uh, this vertical. It's just like you 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 go half Kelly, but you lose only forty five percent, only twenty five percent of your return, of your potential return. But at the same time, your risks. Uh, they halve. They go from from uh, from one Kelly to half Kelly. So you halve your risk, but you only lose twenty five percent of your return. It's a great trade off, and a lot of traders take it. They, a lot of traders use the half Kelly as their maximum. But then anything over over a Kelly, it's over aggressive. In the long run, you can be getting the same return with a mirror image of that risk. And the further you go away from the Kelly, the lower your return is going to be. So there's no point in going over one Kelly. So you, People who trade with 80% of their account just are are not thinking about these things or they don't know about these things because they could be trade, getting the same results trading with like 4% of their account or something like that. So there's always, for anything above a Kelly, there's always a mirrored image risk on the left where, where you have much less risk, but you get in the long run, you're going to get the same reward. Anything over two Kelly is just insane risk taking, and there's no point like trading with 95% of your account, or even most of the time, even 80% of your account. It makes no sense because you are there's a regardless of how profitable your trading strategy is, there's always a two Kelly point. Um, well, I probably shouldn't say it that way. Like so, even for the most profitable trading strategies, if you calculate the two Kelly, and it's uh, it falls on this chart, so it falls under 100% which happens most of the time. So even for the most profitable trade strategies, if you trade over two Kelly, in the long run, you're going to lose money. It's just a mathematical concept. It's not even a statistical thing. It's just mathematically, you're going to lose money. That's it. It's going to happen. And so, you know, then we talk about all these risk trackings. And so, and it re it's really mind opening. So if you've already seen this, I hope that was a useful refresher. And I hope you'll um, go back to the Kelly criterion and consider it again. If you haven't, highly advise you to check it out and considering your trading. So once again, going back, this is this thing over here, risk. We're talking about risk. So we've talked about the formula of step one the, or the checklist. Step two is risk. Um, we talked about that what is acceptable is generally accepted, but also what is your maximum? Find out your Kelly criteria for your trading strategy and uh, use that, like, like um, consider that in your trade, abide by it. Okay. Monthly targets and limits. So let's go through this. We're, we're going a bit over, so 8.37 in my time. Examples. Um, so monthly targets, uh, targets. So 5% of account per month. So again, this can be for either profit or loss. So you can 
say, okay, I can afford to, I want to make 5% of my account on top of my account every month, or I can afford, uh, or I can make like, I want to aim for 200 pips per month. One could be dollars, I should have put another one for dollars. Or I, I could be, I want to make $200 per month on top of my account. Um, uh, or same thing, again, everybody's situation is different. Same thing can be for loss. Like you can say, I can only, if I want to only maximum lose 5% of my account per month, if I lose more than, uh, lose 5%, then I'm gonna stop trading. If I lose more than 200 pips or 200 pips, I'm gonna stop trading. So every situation different, your values might be different. Um, let's talk about uh, these two separately. So profit target, what are the pros and cons? Pros. Number one, ambition. It gives you that drive to continue trading, to, uh, you know that you need that to meet that target, you need to go back into your trading, you always, you always will want to continue until you meet that target. So that's a good thing, especially at the start of the month. Um, consistency, so you know if you are able to meet that target, you know how much uh, profit you can expect from you every month. You're like, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty good at it, I meet my target usually 20 days into the month and then I stop trading, so uh, it gives you that uh, consistency throughout the month and gives you time to rest. So once you've met your target, you can be like, okay, cool, I'm not gonna trade, I might research some strategies, I might do something else, I might chill out, you know, I'm done for the month, move on to the next month and then I'll do this again. Cons emotions so this is this ambition is the start of the month towards the end of the month if you're not meeting your target you'll start getting emotional you'll be thinking oh my god i need to meet this target i'm so far behind how do i get there i might not get there then you'll be start to push the limits you'll start to think oh i need to meet my five percent target i've only done one percent of my account i need to start trading with more lots i need to uh how do i get there and you'll start uh, there's a good chance that you'll start making mistakes and also a profit target on the other hand if you do meet your target you might have missed opportunities right so a completely different type of con that if you did meet your target everything's going well and you uh, did it in 10 days what about the other 20 days you're missing opportunities there so in my view for the again your your opinion might be different but in my view the profit target the pros don't outweigh the cons. So the cons are more, the, are greater. So the missed opportunities especially, and then the pushing the limits, emotion. I, would, I wouldn't I would set a, a profit target for myself. Like I wouldn't go ahead, go and miss these opportunities. If I'm making a profit, I would just continue making a profit in that month. Loss limit, interesting, okay, pros. Strict rule, so you have a strict exit rule when you're like, all right, I've lost 5% of my account this month, or let's say not five, maybe 10% or 20% of my account this month, and I can't trade anymore, that's it. Gives you time, uh, so we'll get to time just now. So strict rules, so it's very good in that sense. Promotes conservatives, so you know that you have a target of uh, like a loss limit of 20%, and right away, trading with 10% of your account per trade is insane, right? Because you only get two trades in that month. You don't even get the 10 trades we talked about. You only get two. So it promotes conservatism. You'll right away start thinking, oh, maybe I should start trading with 2%. So at least I can get 10 trades into that month, right? So you no longer think of your account as the 100%. You think of your account as that 20% that you're allowed for this month. And time and time, what does that mean? So it gives you time to rest. It gives you time to reassess things. It gives you... Um, like if you if you do like lose that amount and you stop trading it gives you time to recuperate and uh, retest your strategy and things like that and also gives a market time maybe maybe what happened was there is a cycle in the market that was not favorable to you and it wasn't and therefore your strategy wasn't performing or there's something happening in the market maybe it needs time to move on and maybe or maybe you just give it some time so that maybe this new new cycle settles in and you get time so it needs time to settle in and you will use that time to adapt your strategies to it right cons of a loss limit can be daunting it can be daunting especially when you're getting close to it you like oh, i've already lost um i don't know 12 percent of my account out of 20 percent that i can potentially i'm allowed to lose this month maybe i should start trading less and so on so you might become extremely conservative you might start trading like one percent 0 0.10 but 0 0.5 percent of your account 0 0.1 percent of your account on every trade so you might be you might be um uh, encouraged or like uh you might start wanting to reduce your risks 
uh, to not meet that target. So it's also about discipline, about keeping true to your trading strategy. And missed opportunities again. So you might leave the market and um, uh, because you you didn't, um, like you met your, you got your stop loss limit and then you're not trading for 10 days. You might miss opportunities. But at the end of the day, maybe you know how they say sometimes if it's a winning streak, maybe things are going well. If it's a, and maybe the market is favorable, maybe if it's a losing streak, maybe you should give it some time to move on. So personally, personally, I think in this case, the pros outweigh the cons. So a loss limit is a good idea, and I've used trading strategies that where there was a loss limit, so even an automatic one, that um, uh, if uh, the um, balance on the account or equity on the account falls below a certain value, then it automatically stops all of the trading until the next calendar month. Um, so personally, I think in this case, it's something worth considering. Again, they're both worth considering. It's all up to you and your personal situation. Okay, we're getting there. Number four, leverage. Okay, so no leverage. Well, I wanted to give you this example because a lot of people um, think leverage is horrible, leverage is bad. We've we talked about this in the Forex Trading A to Z course, why it's it's it can be both good and bad. I wanted to give you this example. I, I've, I've thought of it myself a lot of times. But I've never actually given to anyone. So you guys can tell me your comments. Actually, type them in after after I we do this this one slide. Just type in your comments. What do you think of this example? Just say um, if you thought it was helpful or if you thought it was not helpful. I would be interested to hear. So um, let's say you have a thousand dollars and you're trading with no leverage. Like you, you don't have leverage, right? You just actually have a thousand dollars in your pocket, US dollars. So this will give you a different perspective on forex trading. You have a thousand dollars in your pocket, US. You go and um, you go to the um, currency exchange and at the rate of 1.32 you buy 1320 Australian dollars so that's yesterday's rate and so you just go and you actually buy physically buy 1320 Australian dollars. that's a phys that's a forex transaction you didn't use a broker you didn't use leverage you didn't have an account or anything you, you had an account but it was in your pocket now you have 1,320 Australian dollars. They are in your pocket. You go back home and you put them in an in envelope under your mattress. Whatever happens on the market, up or down, left or right, <laughs> well, it always go right anyway, but up or down, doesn't matter how many pips it goes up or how many pips it goes down, you are always going to have 1,320 Australian dollars because they're physically printed on paper lying under your mattress. And nobody in the world is going to come to you and say, hey, here's a margin call. You're, you have to you know, close your balance. Your, your position has been forced closed and your account, uh, you've lost all your money on your account. You have zero. That won't happen, right? Because you physically have the money. You're not trading with leverage. There is no frozen margin. There is no... Um, there, there's no just normal margin that is not the frozen margin. Uh, so there's no um, chance for you to, there's nothing going to eat into your account because you don't owe anybody money. You're not trading with leverage. Whatever happens, you're always going to have those $1,320. And whenever you feel like it, you're going to go back and convert them to US dollars. So you will never, ever, there's no, there's no such a term in this scenario as lost all your money on your account. You can't lose it on your account because it's your money. You can't lose it, right? So that's that's an important thing to consider that you can also trade Forex like that. If you open an account, you have enough money, like a million dollars, and you open it without any leverage, one to one, you will never ever get margin calls because just that's the way it's gonna work. It's gonna work like this. So, and by the way, 1320 is 0 0.01 lots. So you're actually making a Forex transaction. If you wanna think of it in lots, you're making it the small, the very small Forex transaction. Now with leverage, one to 100, you have $1,000, how does this work? thousand dollars what do you do is let's say hypothetically you decide all right so i'm going to use 500 for my frozen margin and 500 is going to be for uh my variable margin so 500 us dollars 500 you split it like you can split it anyway in your head again and then these for these these 500 dollars if you want to enter into a transaction you can buy with leverage without leverage it's 660 australian dollars with leverage it's 66 thousand australian dollars right you add two zeros because the bank is lending you. So basically what will happen, so that's 0 0.66 lots, much greater, right? So what, what happens is the 500, um, the 500 US dollars, uh, they get uh, frozen. So that's the frozen margin on your account because that money is collateral for the 66,000 that you bought. And then this remaining variable margin is, can either go up or down. So 
because you're trading with leverage, you owe money, anything on that, um, any change in this amount is going to be taken out of this amount first. As you can imagine, one point, uh, one pip change here is going to eat into this very quickly. And that's when ha margin calls happens, when this money runs out, right? So that's all there is to leverage. And this is just an example to show you that leverage does increase your risks. If you don't trade with leverage, um, it's your money, right? If you're trading with leverage, as soon as you're trading with leverage, it's somebody else's money, the bank's money or the broker's money, and um, they're going to look out for it and they're going to give you a margin call when you don't have enough money to sustain any more further losses on your account. And the loss is going to be great just because the position size, 066 lots, is great. Again, this might be a bit rushed, but if you're not that comfortable with leverage, you have full access to the Forex Training A to Z course. We have a few lectures on that, leverage and margin and equity and things like that. So check it out for sure. And there you'll learn more about leverage, why it's good, why it's bad, uh, what's risky about what's not. But just remember that trading with leverage does introduce risk, so you need to manage it. So you need to calculate these things. Again, check the Forex Training A to Z course. Um, you need to calculate what your margin will be, what your um, uh, variable margin will be, how much you can afford to lose, and things like that. So just something to remember. Um, again, type in if if the example about the thousand dollars in your pocket was helpful. I think I think it gives a good perspective that forex trading is not all about just getting margin calls. It's uh, ultimately the margin calls happen only because you're borrowing money. Again, it's not a bad thing. It's like a Ferrari. That's what we talk about in the uh, Forex Training to that course. It's like a Ferrari. You can drive a Volkswagen and you know be be cool. Like that's a thousand dollars in your account. Just you know be safe and uh, be happy and you know drive drive carefully and slow. Or you can get a Ferrari, and you can drive um, really fast but safe. Or you can drive really fast but crazy and you know be prone to getting into an accident. So leverage is like upgrading from a Volkswagen to a Ferrari. Uh, it has benefits and it has risks, right? So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Um, yeah, so think about leverage when you're trading. It's uh, definitely one of the risk factors. And finally, market volatility. So quickly, um, what is market volatility? Is It is when um, market is um, the ranges of the movements of the market so within every single bar is greater or smaller so you've got two indicators that are good for market volatility bollinger bands and average to range so the average to range for instance here you can see it's showing greater volatility and this is um, in points over here so you can actually see so it's here it's from 0 0.01 um oh so let's say in pips it's like 100 what is it 119 pips because this is the daily chart for the british canadian dollar 120 pips to 280 pips and you can see like at the bottom so that means that the average volatility here so the daily range is about uh, between the high and low on average is about 110 pips and over here the daily range is about 280 pips right so the um the market is more volatile it's and ball japan similar so when it's narrow the volatility is low when it's high, greater the volatility is high and the way it's constructed this is a moving average and then it uh, places these two lines at um, at a certain coefficient of the standard deviation from these from the moving average. So you can read more about the Bollinger Bands. But basically, when it's wide, it means the market is more volatile. When it's narrow, the market's less volatile. So you can kind of see like here it's high, here it's very wide. Right? Here it's high, here it's wide. Here it's narrow, right? But this indicator didn't pick it up. Here it's high, here it's uh, like wide, here it's high. Here it's low, here it's narrow. So they kind of, most of the time, they um, meet each other in terms of their uh, assessment of the market. And basically, they tell you like if the market's volatile or not. Why, why are we talking about volatility? Because volatility adds additional risk to your trading. So let's quickly, I know we're going a bit over, but I think it's worth it. Let's quickly go here. So hopefully you can see the chart. Um, so you can see, or actually better like this, you can see that, let's say if you're trading, it looks like say here you're trading, um, it's 220 pips or 280, it's here it's uh, 120 pips. So basically, um, if the market is more volatile, your stop loss is more likely to get triggered even if it isn't a directional movement. So just because the market's more volatile, your stop loss might get triggered. And market less volatile, your stop loss is less likely to get triggered because of a non-directional movement. Uh, 
right? So if you move move across, like here you can see, like what I'm talking about here is market goes through phases, and here this is the daily chart. So this is not like inside the day. This is phases inside the month, inside the year. You can see like for a few uh, from from April 2014 to September 2014. It was very low volatility, right? And then the volatility was high. And this is go this goes back to before that was high. And this goes back to things we talked about about uh, the time that sometimes market cycles need time to adapt, right? So you might you might you might have a profitable 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 trading strategy, and then all of a sudden it's a loss, right? Because that might be because the volatility just went up. Maybe you need time to let the strategy the, the market adapt. Of course, it's a lot of times from February to May, but. Your point still stands. You can observe similar things on hourly time frames and so on. So, um, yeah, so volatility changes through time and it can affect your trading. So, it's always a good idea to look at volatility. Let's look at the hourly time frame. Here you can see like cyclical, right? Because that's day, day starts, day ends, day starts, day ends, and so on. Um, when, it, when the people are sleeping, when the people are trading. But still, you can also, if you look at the overall picture, you can see that. Like it's it's cyclical, but it's going up and down as well, right? So what we saw in the previous chart, so it's going up overall and then down overall. So those things can affect your trading strategy and also look out for volatility. Volatility is an inherent forex trading or any kind of market risk. So like here, voila, right? What what happened there? So maybe you have a profitable trading strategy, and then this happened. Of course, it needs time to settle down. This is a massive, you know, massive drop, and what what was that? There was um. That was a Brexit, right? The British uh, government decided to exit the European Union. All right, um, there we go. So that was uh, volatility. We still have six minutes for questions. Maybe we'll do a bit more than that. Let's dive back into our questions. Yeah, where is it? All right, awesome. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to stop the screen sharing. All right. So we got Josh who said yes, this was helpful, and Martin said helpful, beautiful. Thanks, guys. Oh, wait, uh, and Elia, I think, said helpful. Well, lovely. Um, questions. So type in your questions into the question box. Um, hope you enjoyed that presentation. We talked about five different uh, types of uh, uh, forex risk. Again, those are not all of them. There's, there's more. You should research more, but those are some pointers which you should consider. And uh, Carlos says volatility and calculation will have very helpful. Um, McHuye. Uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Very helpful. Glad, glad you liked it. Um, awesome. So, uh, yeah, just type in your questions. We've got some minutes, some couple minutes. Uh, again, if we don't, if you don't get them in now, if you can't, if can't think of a question later, guess what? You're part of the Forex Bow Training Academy, so you can always ask that question in the private Facebook group, which I hope you're a part of. If you're not, you should send an email to supportforexbow.com and ask to get added, and uh, we will add you. And uh, yeah, so you can always ask the questions there again. Uh, Kirill, in your experience, what is the best return achievable using a full Kelly on a grade system? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Um, full Kelly on a grade. I don't think I don't think I've ever. Um, so I don't think I've ever consciously used the full Kelly. I wasn't like, all right, so let's calculate the full Kelly and now let's use the full Kelly. Whenever I got like before I knew about the Kelly criterion, I would just kind of. I have two approaches: either use a very high lot lot size to speed up the count, or uh, use a low lot size when it's more conservative. When I found out about the Kelly, I was like, I don't, I didn't consider using the full Kelly. I would use the half Kelly. Why would you use the full Kelly if you have that beautiful trade-off of halving your risks and, and getting a quarter of your return down? Um, best return. Uh, that's it's a good question. Uh, Using using the half Kelly, um, it's uh, it's tough tough to answer that question because it depends on the trading strategy, it depends on the time of the year, and depends on like um, it depends on like I would I can tell you for like a portfolio of strategies I guess in like in a year um, like between twelve and twenty percent I guess. Uh, again, it, it depends. Like that's using using somewhere close to a half Kelly or maybe less than a half Kelly. Uh, using like insane type of trading, not insane, but uh, more aggressive, uh, closer to the Kelly. I would say closer to the Kelly, but not consciously calculating the Kelly. 
but uh, close to, uh, to the Kelly because <laughs> because ultimately the strategy didn't lose money, right? So if it didn't lose money, it's not over aggressive risk taking. Um, then I've had strategies that do like uh, um, fifty to seventy, but I don't. I wouldn't say that's. Um, that's a lot of work, you know. That's a lot of adjusting all the time here and there. You've seen you've seen those statements in um, the um, forex. Uh, if, you, if you haven't, in there's I show some of them in the forex trading. What is it called? The MQL four course. So I showed the start of the course some of those statements. I think in some in one of the other courses. So you can always check those out. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. not something that's just like comes easy. It's a lot of work, and it's. Um, not uh, i wouldn't say it's fully sustainable so it was just like a market thing that i saw uh, like on the british pound canadian dollar or, or some other currency and then like yeah adapt to trading strategy and um it works on that so i wouldn't say like 40 50 percent is you know if, if, if people could make 40 50 percent all the time that would be just insane but 10 12 15 i think that's that's totally doable Oh, again, a very hard question to answer, and we're not um, like I can't. This is just like my thoughts on this. I can't give you specific advice because we can only give general advice, and what your targets should be is totally dependent on you and your situation. Josh, is it possible to incorporate the Kelly Criterion into algorithm trading system, or is it something you have to review and update manually so often? Great question. Um, it is possible. Anything you can write down on a paper, I always say, can be turned into a uh, algorithm train system you can always anything I can, you can write down i can code or anybody or somebody can code for you um or you can code the thing with that is usually what you do in a algorithmic training system is you incorporate a different money management style method for example uh, larry williams method or the ryan jones method or there are a few other ones um, and so that is kind of your predominant thing and then the Kelly criteria needs to either be incorporated in that, which makes it, makes it like overly complex, um, or um, what uh, what is done usually is you have that uh, money management method inside your training strategy, but you make sure that it abides by the Kelly criterion. So you you basically you check, okay, so at what percentage increase rate in the um, Larry Williams method am I gonna stay under the half Kelly and as soon as you like go over the half Kelly you need to recalculate things recalibrate and you do it again so like probably your second approach is in your question is better you excuse me you update manually so uh, as long as you know like you don't uh, you, you don't you're not over aggressively approaching these things then especially in the in the Ryan Jones money management method and by the way check out the money management course for that you can you can calculate it because it's like a stepwise thing and you can kind of see when you're getting too close to the half Kelly or quarter or whatever or uh, full Kelly and you're like okay time to adjust you know recalculate these things I've got a bigger balance because your balance as well like your trading strategy might change with uh, with time you know the profits to losses that ratio might change so you need to adjust this thing so um yeah that's the way i would do it i would look at the um how it's going and manually adjust it once in a while like i i haven't coded the kelly criteria into algorithm systems um like that that i've um used on live accounts it's no, it's not really necessary it's a good but it's important thing to look out for Okay, um, cool, thanks Josh, thank you Rod, um, that's great. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's good that you, yeah, I <laughs> remember that. Um, okay, no more questions, um, let's have a quick poll. And Paul, um, this was our first webinar inside, you know, just four members only. So let's have a look at how would you rate this webinar from one to five, one being the lowest, five being the highest. Tell me what you think. Honest, honest opinions, please. Um, honest opinions, please. I'll make it public so you guys can see the results. Oh, wait, hold on. Start. <laughs> Didn't click start. All right. So tell me what you think. Uh, one to five. I'll check if there's any more questions. No questions. And um, yeah. And otherwise, we will catch up in the Forex Gold Trading Academy. Can everybody see the poll? Oh, okay. There we go. Beautiful. So please uh, submit your votes. Dun, dun, dun. 
Um, yeah, otherwise everything everything is fun. Everything is fun. A new week ahead. Yeah, uh, we got uh, we got somebody in uh, uh, not Eros, somebody else in the, the forex world. Um, Bry, that's right, Bry in I think Bry, but he's you can just say Bry in the uh, Facebook group, in the private group, and he submits his results every week. I think he's going on holiday this week though, but next week. It'll be interesting to see how much he makes. I think this week made 25 pounds. Super happy for him. Like, uh, we've got to go all day buy a few beers. That's awesome. Um, okay, thank you for your results. So five, 40%, four, 40%, three, 20%. Um, pretty excited about that. Uh, good start. Maybe there's a few things I can improve. Tell me in the Forex Code Trading Academy private group. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much, guys, for coming. It was a pleasure having you here. Hosting you here from Montreal in Canada. Uh, if you're more in Montreal, shout out on the Facebook group. Love to catch up. I'm here for three more days. And then flying back to California. And uh, yeah, see you around. Thanks a lot for coming. Take care. Take consider your risks. Look out for um, different risk approach approaches. Look at the things that I referred to. This webinar was like a collateral of different um, things you should look into. So have a look into them and maybe you can improve your training a bit more from there. All right, thanks a lot. Take care. See you guys next time. Until next time, happy trading.